Howdy, this is Kevin Stoda at the Kevin Stoda channel. Wishing you uh, a good evening from the porch. Um, I got a letter today from Southwest Reservation Aid. I immediately thought of the uh, people in the Navajo areas and the Indian reservations of uh, Southwest and United States where they are suffering from terrible amounts of COVID-19 uh, cases and deaths and uh, I've been told outside of New York it's some of the highest uh, rates they've seen and um, I'm quite worried about the tribes there. My dad used to work on a reservation installing telephones. Um, friends of mine helped set up the electrical power plants, the recent ones, the uh, ones that help uh, get solar power and, and other forms of alternative energy. Um, shout out to my friend uh, who did that kind of work. Uh, the letter is from this woman. She's a chairperson of the organization. It's uh, Lovina B. Lee. And uh, I would like you to think about what you can do to support uh, uh, Reservation Indians of America, Natives. Um, they sent me a three-minute quiz, American History quiz, which I want to share with you while we're out here on the porch this evening. Kevin says, the three-minute American History quiz illustrates how policies made over 185 years ago still affect the everyday lives of Native Americans. I encourage you to take this quiz and then help us raise awareness by telling your family and friends what you've learned. And now I'm passing it on to you. First question, uh, can you answer? Why did the United States government establish Indian reservations? Was it to help the Indians? Was it to protect the Indians? Well, according to this uh, writing, the answer is the government's objective was to get, was to rid the country of its Indian problem and open their land for white settlers. Sounds correct. Beginning in 1830 with the Indian Removal Act, remember uh, uh, Jackson, who's on your $20 bill, is responsible for that. The official policy of the United States was Indian removal. It, was, it made uh, the removal of Native Americans forcible from their ancestral lands and relocated them as far away as they could in other regions reserved only for Indians. Today, these, know, these are known as the reservations. Uh, they do this in other parts of the world. They did it in apartheid South Africa. They did it in, um, uh, they planned it for Russia in, in, uh, during the Nazi era, uh, where they would have Gestapo empires, etc. Um, then, in some reservations. Uh, they did this in uh, Palestine, uh, currently. Um, today, they're these are reservations in many corners of the United States. Uh, for the Cherokee and other tribes, this is often remembered as the Trail of Tears, the 1830 walk. But it didn't end there. During the Navajo Long Walk beginning in 1863, did you ever hear of that one? Navajo Long Walk? Thousands of Navajo were also removed from their homelands. Many died or grew ill along the way due to illness and malnutrition. They settled within an area of only 40 square miles and gave up their sacred homeland mountains. Uh, mountains have been in the news where Trump's uh, trying to re-give away some of that land to um, other contractors. Question number two. How did the government decide where to locate the reservations? I guess it, uh, where there would be the least number of uh, white folks wanting the land. I don't know. Well, let's find out. Answer. Typically, the government put the reservations in the areas it regarded as being unfit for white settlers, arid places unsuitable for agriculture, and isolated from towns, transportation, and growing economy. I guess I got that one right, and the Indians sure got it. However, as the settlers expanded westward, the government took back most of the reservations 
the lands to and forced Native Americans to relocate again, this time to even less desirable land quite often. And today the land once reserved for Native Americans has shrunk to just 2.3% of the land originally promised by the U.S. government. I didn't know that. 2.3% of the land originally promised to the Native Americans. Question three. If I were to visit an Indian reservation, what should I expect to see today? I hope I can find some hope. But we're hearing a lot of bad news. I had heard some progress over the years, but it seems like every step forward is three steps back, or three steps forward is two steps back, uh, something like that. Um, the answer is, you would see a proud people, strong in tradition and values, but living in a near third world condition. Poverty is extreme, it's the norm. Drive around the reservation and you'll see many of our people living in rundown houses and trailers, many of which are without electricity, telephone, running water, or a sewage system. And that's what I hear has been a big problem in the Indian lands in the Southwest with this coronavirus. People don't have running water. How, how can you expect them to uh, keep themselves clean, wash up after every meeting when they don't have running water? Uh, some people have to go 40 miles to buy water on this kind of a reservation or even 40 kilometers. Anyway, it's outrageous. Today, uh, Native Americans are the poorest population in the entire Northern Hemisphere. That includes Mexico, Guatemala, well, Guatemala has Native Americans too, um, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Panama, Canada, and Costa Rica and Haiti. Can you believe that? Um, how can these conditions exist in a rich and powerful country like the United States? Well, we could say the same thing about everything we've witnessed over the last 50 years since people have been worshiping a man named Ronald Reagan and all the things he uh, represented of in terms of uh, let's spend as much money as we can on the military and give as little as we can to social concerns and socially deprived peoples. This has been going on for far too long and we can't put up with it anymore, right? And now the healthcare situation has made become so expensive that most people are just suffering. The Indians therefore need a handout from the government and I, according to what I've heard this year, they're waiting on eight billion dollars that's not been yet given to them by the Trump administration. God help these people. Question number four. How, how can these conditions exist? Answer, harsh government policies concentrated Native Americans in barren regions, inadequate for farming and distant from settlers, supplies and jobs. Most reservations are so remote that added costs of transporting supplies and products on and off the reservation make local production impractical. What's more, the U.S. government holds reservation lands in trust so outside businesses are reluctant to invest and create jobs on reservation lands. I don't know. I hope that some of these Indian tribes who've got casinos can somehow take that money and use it right. I, I hear that some are. Uh, even sadly today, between 35 and 85 percent of all Native Americans who live on the reservations are unemployed. To find work, many must move away from the reservation and leave their families behind. Kind of like the people from Kansas I knew growing up. It's a people exporting state. This is why about half the children living on reservations are being raised by their grandparents. Even the most basic services, health care, retail stores, pharmacies and schools are often an hour or more away and families are forced to choose between using what little money they have to buy gasoline for a car or food for their children. Hmm. Again, on the, the populated regions of all parts of the United States are kind of like that, but I do think it's worse for uh, Native Americans who have valued community much more than uh, building a wealthy empire, even if they had a chance. Uh, number five, what's the question? Why didn't I know about this before? Well, some of these things I knew. I was an American history teacher, and I've kept tabs. 
I've uh, visited the reservations. I would like to support them. I'll probably send some money after this. I hope to. Um, the answer is, why didn't I know about this? Answer, many people don't, and you can help change that by sharing this quiz to raise awareness. Make sure your friends and family take the quiz and pass it on to as many people as you can. That's what I'm doing right here from the porch at my house. What else can you do? Uh, this little article or letter says, by now I'm sure you're wondering what else can I do? The most urgent need is for food and drinking water. Today, one in four North Native Americans who live on reservations don't have enough to eat. Wow. We have um, uh, All Tribes College, not very far west of here. It's Haskell Indian University, Native American University in Lawrence. And many people were sent home you know, because of COVID-19, all of them, all of them. But uh, when you think about it, they're sent home to where there's no food, where they might not have internet infrastructure to do classes. It's really been rough on them. Uh, we get to hear uh, native news radio, and uh, I suggest you guys take advantage of it. Find some native news radio or TV productions and get in touch with what's happening. Uh, what can we do, or what has been done to solve the problem? Uh, this organization like the Southwest uh, Reservation Aid uh, help uh, get the problem recognized. They help the people get food and water. Uh, they also distribute, you know, specifically beans, rice, flour, soup, canned goods, and others. Other needs to Navajo, Hopi, Hopi Zuni, Apache, and reservation tribes. Last year alone, they claim to provide enough food for thousands of meals for Native Americans, elders, families, and children thanks to good people like you. All right, so be a good person. Um, let's see if we've got an address for them. I uh, don't see it on the... Pro oh, here it is. Okay. Um, the program partnership with Native Americans. It's at www capital S W R A little letters p r o g r a m dot org that's s w r a capital program dot org s w a r a program dot org okay I'll show it to you real close up there All right anyway uh, I want to pray for the folk there and I want you to be concerned and let's turn this country around please help the native uh, peoples who are have been mistreated historically and help empower them help get some jobs there or bring them to whatever it needs so they can develop themselves and uh, we can help develop them and connect them to our society if they want to in the ways that they want to okay uh, God bless you. Have a good night from the porch. This is Kevin Stoda at Kevin Stoda Channel. See you soon.